All right, this is Joshua. Welcome to the Daily Video Blog. We have a guest, the illustrious Mitch Goldstein, my podcast host, whose work I never promote on this video <laughs> blog, um, which is weird. Uh, so we're, we're going to continue. So Mitch is in Minneapolis judging the AIGA yep. awards show or like local design show. And he was nice enough to collude and make sure to include a piece of my work. So I'm really happy about but that. But it was totally ethically legit. I'm going to go on record and say it was ethically, ethically legit. Yeah, he didn't know. I did not him. know it was him. So it was dope. Yeah, so it was cool. So we're going to do the daily video blog here in Northeast Minneapolis in front mm -hmm. of this beautiful graffiti train because okay. um, we're going to keep it novel. <laughs> and we're going to continue to talk about things that you learned at work that maybe you learned in retrospect or maybe even things you learned not to do. And I'm going to immediately mm -hmm. put Mitch on the spot and say, what is like a, let's think about like, how about your Oh, wait, no, I'll, I'll let you figure it out. <laughs> Let's like say based on like, so you, have you ever had a jobby job or have you always been freelance? Um, all freelance, but I did do freelance in, um, I was like in-house at RISD for about a year after I graduated. Um, it was freelance, but I was like in the office and in the studio every day. So things that I learned not to do. Or they can be yeah. like, like lasting takeaways. So today I, mm. I talked about, I don't remember what I talked about. Boy, that's a good question. It passes me think. by. But like, I, what's like maybe the most like lasting thing where you were like, e maybe in retrospect, even you figured out like, oh shit, like I, like I was doing this thing and I maybe didn't even know like what I was doing wrong. Like that's a theme of mine. It was like five years later, like oh that's why that job sucked. Yeah, I kind of think like it sounds really different, like opposite of what you think, but it's like doing what you think they want versus doing what you think is the right thing to do. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, we talked about this like on the podcast, right? Like, yeah, there are clients and like, you know, it's a service industry and all that stuff. But ultimately, I maintain and continue to maintain that all your work is personal, regardless of whether you're working with a client or not. And all your work has something to do with you or else like they wouldn't hire you to do it. Because like any asshole with Photoshop could just do it, right? And so... I think the stuff that I did that sucked the most was when I was trying to like, like pre-guess what they wanted, like like at a really superficial level. Yeah, like totally. they like green, so I better make some shit that's green. Yeah. Um, and I think the stuff that was most successful was when I was willing to just do it like for me as much as for them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it sounds like all altruistic and you know, but like that crashed and burned sometimes. But I think that ultimately. In the long run, I think as I've matured as a designer, as I've been around the block more, as I've seen more stuff, as I've gotten more educated, I think that, um, and I keep talking about this like in every, you know, various channel I'm getting involved this in. This actual train. Oh, look at this train. This is going to be so This is a loud. legit train. Um, is like that sense of self and agency, I think, is super important. Yeah. And I think that is like the thing. Yeah. You know? And I think, so I'm going to add on to this. So typically these videos are shorter, but you're going to get a longer one yeah. tonight. Um, with an actual moving train, which is dope. Yeah, which is legit. Um, kind of running along with that. So, like, one, the Nate, I think I have a giant bug on my neck, do I? Oh, yeah. We get you. Thank I you, sir. You. Um, so, I think one of the things is like the, the altruistic thing, it always feels super corny to yeah. talk about that stuff. Like, you always feel like this sort of like self help, like D bag. Totally. Except yeah. that maybe there's a reason why all these self help books are about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a reason why, like, a certain caliber of like successful person always has read the same books and is always talking about the same things because there's like some truth to them. And I know, like, a thing um, I remember sort of thinking about a couple years ago was that every project that went really, truly bad, mm -hmm. I was more concerned with what can I get out of this than what can I put into yeah, this? Yeah, totally. Um, so maybe projects that like should have been turned down because mm -hmm. it was like, this is obviously like I'm the wrong person for this. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, like I feel like there's one that's super specific on the tip of my tongue, but it, I'm forgetting the, the full context. But I remember really specifically um, talking with some people. Oh, no, never mind. I totally remember the project. So I did <laughs> packaging. Uh, probably around 2008 mm -hmm. for a music production company and what they were doing is like they had maybe CD box sets of stock music basically right, right. Um, and they would send all these box sets and they started doing that in like 2001 mm -hmm. there was no need to be doing that in 2008 there was no need to be doing anything physical other than trying to get attention mm -hmm. so they were going to do a flash drive with like 
a hundred hours of music on it. Something crazy. Their <laughs> yeah. entire library plus everything new they'd made. My first re so at the time this happened, it's 2009. Now that I think about it, my daughter Patience had just been born, mm -hmm. and I was broke as shit. I right. was so broke. I was calling everybody on the planet trying to find work mm -hmm. and money because I thought I was gonna get evicted. Because right. I'm a very responsible dad. Yeah, yeah. So I get a call about this project, and they, I go and meet them, and I think they describe it, and my first reaction is, why isn't this a website? And yep. they preemptively talk about why it's not a website. Mm -hmm. And it was like a bunch of stuff about like how important physical things are, and websites are bullshit, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And I was like, all right, they know what they want, and they have, and it wasn't that much money, I never should have done it, it's like, <laughs> and they have $4,000. <laughs> I am gonna do this project. Um, and it was a fucking disaster. Yeah. I probably spent 6,000 of my own money totally. in a mess I had made. Mm -hmm. um, my accountant that year was like, I don't understand like why you're posting such a big loss, you didn't make any money. <laughs> right. And I was like, I spent it all trying to do this project yeah. that I knew was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. And I should have just had the stomach and been like, I would love to work with you guys. Like our aesthetics seem right in line. Right. But um, this seems like a terrible idea yeah. to me. But I kind of just let them like decide. And so here's the thing. They did this mailing. It must have cost twelve to sixteen thousand dollars for them to do. And it was a fucking disaster. Yeah. Uh, they lost twelve to sixteen thousand dollars. It was a complete and total mess. That part was not my fault because mm -hmm. they were gonna waste that money anyway. And then they were like, Yeah, this didn't really work. It costs a lot of money. We're gonna do a website. A website I would have loved to have right, designed. Right. So um, and I felt like to this day, I feel guilty that I didn't say, this is a terrible course of action yeah. and I can't be involved. Like I want to work with you guys, but not on this. So, and that's one of those things. It's like total kind of self-help, like give more than you get stuff. But I probably have four or five stories like that over the last 13 years mm -hmm. of shit where I took the money when I should have walked. Um, and I feel like I screwed the people I took the money from. So, and I think it's like, um, when Nancy Scolos and Tom Waddell were on the podcast that you were not on, it was like episode, uh, I don't remember, like, we're gonna get seven or eight or something. Yeah. Pray for us. There's like a lot of bugs out here. And, um, and you know, I've known Tom and Nancy for a long time and they're mentors of mine. But one of the things that they said that was super important that I really got was that it's not about your ego. It's about like the work's ego. Yeah. You know, it's like you're, you're, you're like serving the work first, not serving you. Kind of like not, whoa, that's loud. Yeah, Minneapolis, land train of trains yard. here. It's fucking dope. Um, like, you're not even, I mean, you're serving the client to some extent, but ultimately, like, you're all serving the work. And when the work is, like, when the ego of the work is served, like, this stuff is good, and yeah. it makes sense, and it does what it needs to do, and it's, like, appropriate, it reaches farther. And I really buy that. Like, yeah. I really, you know, and, and my wife, Ann, and I, we work together, and, um, it isn't about her decisions better or my decisions better or she did seven hours and I did three hours. It's is the work awesome, yes or no? Yeah. Nothing else is as important as is the work awesome. Yeah. Totally. You know, and we're fortunate to be in a position where we can care about that more than other aspects, you know? And right, um, there's no brand standard stuff. Yeah, there you know, and you know, getting paid is obviously like gotta make a living. Fortunately I teach, you know, so it's like there's like a reality we have which is like super incredible and amazing and I acknowledge and recognize how lucky I am to have this like sort of full-time gig that pays enough doesn't pay great but it pays enough and gives me a shitload of time to do yeah. other stuff at the same time and ultimately like be part of being a teacher is being paid to be smart like you're literally <laughs> paid to make work that's interesting like that's my job yeah in addition to teaching is to like actually do shit so it's an insanely awesome opportunity, you know? And, and obviously you teach and like, there's a reason why people teach, yeah. you know? And like the benefit of teaching isn't really the paycheck. It helps, but it's not really like yeah. cha-ching. It's like just sort of all of the other stuff that happens around it. Yeah. That's kind of what I learned. Like, sir, like the work's ego is the ego you gotta pay attention to. Yeah. You know? I agree with that 100%. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you for watching. Mitch, thank thanks you, for Minneapolis. Being on. It's great. I love your town. Word. This place is awesome. Uh, if you don't want, if you don't listen to our podcast through process, uh, it's throughprocess.com. Yep. If you're a through process listener and you don't watch this video blog, this is the kind of shit I talk about <laughs> literally five days a week. Yep. So subscribe. All right. Thanks for watching. All right. See you, everybody.